Look, the biggest podcast where you can learn them lessons. Line for line where you can learn from different sections. Made it out the mud, come tell your story, blessings. Never know who listening, never know who stressing. Divine gave you a voice, come speak your honest truth. Line for line, go ball for ball, it's up to you. Wanna talk sports, gov, and politics? Wanna talk about where you from and your accomplishments? The line for line is really where you need to be. A platform that's really made for folks like you and me. You can find it all no matter what you seek. Whether you calling or you listening, tune in every week. All right. Welcome back to another special episode of Line for Line Podcast. We have a very special, gracious young lady in the building today. We have Mrs. Abigail Jacqueline in the building. Abigail, how are you? Hi, I'm so fabulous. Thank you for having me. Of course, anytime. How are you feeling on this beautiful Saturday? I'm excited. I just had a good uh, double shot espresso, Mm -hmm. so I'm excited to have a conversation. Of course. Hopefully inspire others to, you know, get into the entrepreneurial spirit. Of course, of course. Yes. Now, when we get ready to start Line for Line podcast, the most cliche thing we do is we have the guests just tell the world just a little bit about themselves. So you have the floor, young lady, to introduce yourself to the world. Okay. So I am generally not one to like spill my age out there, but I think it's very inspiring to share how old you are because you never know where people are in their life, right? Um, So I'm about to turn 23 in two weeks. I'm so excited. Okay. So I got in the business about two and a half years ago. This is my middle of my third year in real estate. Um, born and raised in the Milwaukee area. I went to Nicolay High School, so I grew up in Glendale. Um, I went to college in Michigan for sales and business marketing, but I dropped out. Um, I think it's really important to know that you don't need a college education to get into any field that you want to hop into, but it can help you develop really important skills. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I'm a realtor and I'm with Keller Williams. I recently started a team with one of my great friends, Omar, which is super exciting. So we're hoping to create a young, motivated, social media heavy real estate team here in the Milwaukee area. I just feel like there's not a lot of young energy Mm -hmm. yet here. And I think it's so important to hire somebody with the social media energy. It's crazy what it's done for my business and it's crazy what it can do for others, truthfully. Um, It brings me opportunities like this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and crazy opportunities that have changed, honestly, my clients' lives, which is super cool. So, yeah, I've been in the business three years. Um, I don't want to ramble too much, but I am, yeah, I have a lot of huge goals and I love to talk and inspire others and hear everybody else's goals. Of course, of course. Now, I think like a lot of people at home, they just want to know the early story. Like, yeah. what got you into becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah. How did you become a realtor? Things of that nature. That's a great question. Um, so, I have always been entrepreneurial spirited, like, always running outside, trying to find babysitting jobs, flyering to find a side hustle. I've been working since I was 14. What? Um, I was a janitor. Nah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I could name probably seven different jobs. I've been a lifeguard. I mean, I could name a bajillion jobs I've done. I think it's all about the hustle. Mm -hmm. Uh, My parents instilled that into me into a young age. And I think I realized once I hit, like, maybe 17 or 18, how hard my dad was working at a nine to five. Mm -hmm. And that I never wanted that for myself. Like, I just never wanted to be controlled when to be somewhere, you know, have a boss. Like, I've always felt I have boss energy. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to instill that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've always really had the motivation. Um, I had a clothing business when I was about 17 that I started with my great friend, Bossy. Mm-hmm. He's a Milwaukee photographer. Um, from there, I, had, I ran an exterior house painting business uh, my freshman year of college summer. With it's called Young Entrepreneurs Across America. It's like this huge internship program. Um, I, did I realize it was exterior house painting business? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> I don't know if I would have taken it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I had like seven 32 foot ladders on my Nissan Altima on top of it, like a crazy hustle. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, it was from January, cold winters. It was in Michigan. Um, through April, I was door to door sales. So door knocking on houses to try to sell exterior house painting. Um, and mind you, I'm like a 19 year old girl. Like who, who the hell would trust me to paint right. their house? Right, right. Um, I think it was just all about confidence. I still think to this day, like if you want it, like you can take it. You just have to have the confidence and the grit to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once I hit April, it was time to hire employees. So I was dropping flyers at, uh, like local gyms, like colleges. Um, I was on LinkedIn, Indeed, Facebook marketplace, just trying to hire like young, motivated people to help me paint. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had about five employees, which was amazing. So I had 
by April, I had about like 75,000 in painting already sold. And so by then I was just, you know, retaining my crew, uh, managing the jobs and trying to sell as much more as possible. By the end of the summer, I was just burnt out. I worked like 13 hour days, seven hours a week. And I was like, you know, I'm done with this. I dropped out of college. Um, I just like, this isn't the, the path for me. Like I've learned so much in these past two years. And just even this past summer, then I'm like, I'm ready for the next level. So I decided to take a break before I hopped in my career, backpacked Europe by myself for two months. No way. It was like out of this world amazing. And it really just gave me a refresh and cleared my mind of like what's important to me. And I think it really, what I found most important was that people are the connection and what fuel me. I went to Europe alone and I made the most amazing connections in the most random hostels and the most random places. People I still talk to to this day who are from California, who are from Germany, just amazing people. And I found really like people is what fuels me, mm -hmm. truthfully. So I'm like, hey, sales is my avenue. I did door to door, I did exterior house painting. Like what else, what other sales avenue can I find that's people involved in sales people, right? Mm -hmm. So my grandma was actually a realtor for about 45 years in the Milwaukee area, which so is really the family sick. hustle. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, she passed away about two years before I got into the business. Um, but I just kind of felt like it was like a family heirloom. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what got me into it. Um, I wouldn't say it's like an exact thing. I think it was just really people in sales. Of course, of course. So Now with you being from the Milwaukee area, yeah. can you just tell us a little bit about what the city of Milwaukee has to offer and why yeah. your clients should buy in Milwaukee? Absolutely. I mean, if you rent in Milwaukee, which I'm sure like 99% of the people on here maybe are younger, um, you know the rental market is insane in Milwaukee. It's probably one of the five craziest. I think they just came out with a news article because all these people are leaving the big cities like New York and Boston because it's so expensive and they work from home. You know, mm -hmm. so many people work online and they're finding these great cities with affordable living, affordable cost of living like Milwaukee has. Maybe not to some, but it really is much more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, and they live happy lives. So like people are just coming here. It's kind of crazy. That's what it's about. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think the communities and the neighborhoods around Milwaukee are just really thriving and flourishing. A lot of people actually care about the neighborhoods. They care about their home. They want to create this community while it's still affordable too. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of hard to have these conversations because some people are still stuck in a, you know, scarcity mindset of like, hey, I just need whatever is the smallest payment because I can't take a risk on myself or take a, a risk on my life. Um, I think you just have to do it and you have to do it smartly, right? Um, I love Milwaukee. I think I'm always going to have a home here, but I also think that there's a lot of opportunity in the city and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really finding what your purpose is in life and where you find community and building off of that. Of I mean, you can see downtown Milwaukee, the high rises that are being built. On the up and up. Yeah, it's crazy. I think I think it's the place to start investing. Of course. Um, they just came out with an article. It was 30% of inner city Milwaukee is owned by out-of-state investors. No way. Insane. Which is sad, to say the least. It's not promoting yeah. home ownership in the community, which is what we need. I get a lot of hate on my videos sometimes about investing in Milwaukee. So it, everyone just has this different mindset, right? I think you should invest in your own community. Um, I don't think there should be like these giant black rock invest like they're ruining our economy. So I think you should invest in your own city though. If there's ethical landlords, ethical people who actually care. Like my goal is to have multiple duplexes and four families. I think that should be a lot of people's goals. Some people just don't have the mindset of investing and it's much more attainable and affordable than people may think. Of course. How is it that we work on changing that mindset? To I think it's just conversation. Um, there's so many big realtors in the area who are trying to promote it to well, like low income housing, like how can we build that up? Um, there's a lot of down payment assistance programs out there that just people don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of opportunity, again, that people just don't know about. Like uh, I just posted a clip about how I bought my first home. Like literally I put down everything, my monthly payment, how much I put down my down payment, my closing costs, my interest rate, like put it all out there. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. Like judge me if you want or like whatever the people's perceptions are, right? Um, and a lot of people were like, oh yeah, she must've done FHA. She put, you know, three and a half percent down. Like people just have this mindset and if they just be open and willing to learn, 
and not just like take the first piece of advice some random person told them on their internet, mm -hmm. maybe they would find that it's much more attainable than they think. Of course. You know course. what I mean? Like how many times do we scroll TikTok and just like believe the first, like I, like I all have. Day, all day. Yeah, and you believe the first like thing you, video you see and you don't do any fact checking. Of course, of course. <laughs> like, what's well, that, I mean, that's the thing we live because they put it on social media. That means it's true and totally. the, there's no lies in it because it's on social media. Oh, totally. Saw it on TikTok. Oh, it must be true. They want to put anything on TikTok and it's not true. Literally. <laughs> and like, I'm not one to sit here and say I know everything. Like I'm still learning every day and figuring out life as everyone is. Mm -hmm. So I like that's why I don't want this podcast to be like, oh, my God, I know it all. Like, you know, I think it's just inspiring and learning from people. Of course. Of really. course. Now, can you just help us understand some fun things to do in the Milwaukee oh. area that would draw people to Milwaukee and yeah. potentially being homeowners in Milwaukee? I love that. Um, honestly, I'm a, I'm a really big homebody. Like, I don't do a lot and I'm probably not the best advocate, even though my Instagram handle is moved to Milwaukee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I think the water provides a lot of benefit. I think like boating, fishing, beach, skiing, like there's just so many cool spots. I love going up north a lot because it's so beautiful. Like the Apostle Islands, Washington Island, all the caves, mm -hmm. the beautiful crystal water. Um, I think it's just being in a big city, like the language is quite polluted near the city. Like it's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So I like to get out of it sometimes. Um, the city of Milwaukee though, I just think the thrifting, I'm like a huge thrifter. Um, the thrifting here, I think, is unmatched the Goodwill bins. Yeah. Um, going downtown to, like, coffee shops, restaurants, that's kind of my jam. Like, mm. that's what I do for fun. Um, I think Milwaukee is just creating opportunity every day. They got the Milwaukee buck as well, too. Oh. Been, like, hot. Seriously, yeah. like, I mean, Giannis out of he yeah. helps the city of Milwaukee Absolutely. greatly. And yeah. helps him bring so much more limelight to the city, especially with them winning the championship a couple of years Absolutely. ago as well, too. Just them getting Damian Lillard, like, Milwaukee – is a city that has the potential to be uh, people are slowly bringing it up it's area. To it. yeah, of course absolutely. of course of course now with you being a realtor can you just help us understand what that first meeting looks like once you meet your client and how the rest of the partnership goes from there yeah i mean i think it's really up to you and what you want from it i'm happy to sit down and i love to teach but i'm also here to listen to like what your problems are whether that's figuring out hey how do i find my down payment um, hey, what programs are out there and available to you? I just hopped on a phone call yesterday with a girl who is like, hey, this one I'm paying in rent. You know, I really would love a single family home, but I think a condo is more attainable. How can we make this a reality? Can this happen in two weeks? Is this a year away? Like having conversation, this is currently what my credit score is at. How do I get it to a point where I want it to be attainable? Um, just having honest conversations about what's realistic for you. Generally where it starts is people usually book a consultation on my Instagram just through my Calendly. Mm -hmm. And then we, we hop on a phone call about, you know, 25, 30 minutes to talk about your goals. And then we sit down at an office and I go through the entire process. Some people are like blown away because I will have a meeting and a day later I have an accepted offer on a new home in two weeks. They're, they're yeah. ready homeowners. Like it's crazy how fast the process can work. And sometimes I meet with someone and I don't help them buy something until two, three years later. So it really just depends on the person and their ideal process. Of course. Yeah. How good does it make you feel when you get your homeowners in that first home? I mean, I, I've cried so many times. No I, way. Absolutely. I mean, I am a crier, but <laughs> and so many times because like 99% of my clients, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity, as you can probably imagine. Mm -hmm. um, I bought my first home and it was a very emotional experience for myself. And as you can imagine, for people who have been through a lot, um, a lot of my clients you know, didn't grow up in a stable home. Um, a lot of them, this is like a dream come true that they thought was years away, which is so impactful for myself too. And that's why I feel like I always am giving back to them, always hosting events. Um, I'm al I always give them like a professional photo shoot mm -hmm. at their closing day because I feel like those are photos that I know for myself. I'm going to take years and years and years and carry them with me on my back because i think they're so special mm -hmm. it's such a huge moment um and so i i just always want to give them like their sh moment to shine and you know appreciate and celebrate because like this is a big thing with me i'm always on to the next thing like mm -hmm. always hustling always you know what can i do next what's my next goal um how can i achieve it in two weeks not one month like i have on my goal sheet right but i think really you have to set sit, set back enjoy the moment and like realize your accomplishments and how big they are um 
I struggle with that every day. And I try to tell my clients like, hey, I know you're you're going to go home and pack all your shit and move tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> but like, here's a cake and a bottle of champagne and go sit on the floor and, you know, enjoy this moment for an hour or two because it's a special moment and you deserve it. Of course. Of course. Now, with you being an entrepreneur, do you speak to the highs and lows of being an entrepreneur and the things that come with that? I mean, they're not just highs and lows. They're extreme highs and extreme lows. I think that's the biggest aspect of it is going through one month with, I mean, I'm all commissioned. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to not look at clients and be like, okay, that you're like my next meal or something, right? It's really hard not to because in reality, like that can be the case for many people. Mm -hmm. Um I, if you like read through my reviews, my biggest thing is Abigail didn't just try to sell me a home. She was there for me. She told me when not to buy a home. Like, I think that's like the biggest instances is to tell people when they're making a bad decision and like helping them and being actually ethical. There's so many unethical people out there. I've been in transactions where the other realtor, I'm like, you are doing your client the biggest disservice. Like mm -hmm. you can just feel it and see it. So I think highs and lows, like you're saying, you need someone to be there for you, truthfully. It, you can't be alone in the process. I have a mentor myself, her name's Sarah. She's, I could cry talking about her. She's like the best thing that's ever happened to me. I met her just over a year ago and she's been through what I've been through tenfold. No way. And over years and years and years. Like she's the most sweet, magical, hardworking person. Um, and she's there anytime I'm down. She knows exactly what to do, what to say. Just someone like that is, it's invaluable, truthfully. And if you can find someone like that to help you in whatever career and whatever business you're in, it just makes it so much better. Of course. And I always, I weekly, I have to tell her paragraphs of how much she means to me and how much she's changed my life because finding someone who actually cares about you and your business, it's invaluable. It really is. Of course. Now, how would they go about getting in touch with you if they want to buy a home in the Milwaukee area? Um, really my Instagram is probably where everyone finds me. Um, move to Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yes. But I mean, you can Google my name and my website will come up or my information. You can email me, you can text me, call me. Um, yeah, I don't think it should all be about like, I appreciate the shout out. And I think the biggest thing that I want to like promote on here is just to have honest conversations and to find people who are going to motivate you and to make you better and figure out what you want to be better in, you know? Of course, of course. And that's, so that's like your mindset when you approach this. Absolutely. Find people that can make you better. Yeah. What, what would you say has been the biggest piece of advice that you've got from a mentor or just from someone along the way? I think it's really embracing the middle ground, like not the super crazy highs and not the super crazy lows and being really happy and content with where you are currently in life. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can have goals and ambitions and like want to shoot for the stars, but you need to be happy with the middle ground too, or the lows, truthfully. Like you just need to be happy where you are because it can get really down and, and depressing. Now taking it back to those extreme lows, can you mm -hmm. just give us some advice on how you work through those and how you pull yourself back to the top when you do experience those lows? I'm still struggling with that. I can't I can't say like I have it perf you know, perfected in any, any means. Um, I think it's leaning on people. Mm -hmm. I think it's figure out your why in life, your why in your career, why you're in your entrepreneurship journey, why you do what you do. I do it to see how happy and meaningful my experiences, like what I do for my clients, um, even for selling purposes, like my sellers, the amount of viewership their home can get on my social media. I mean, I have realtors like call me all, all the time. They're like, hey, my client just saw your video and they want to see the house. I'm like, well, it goes live in three weeks. Like, it's crazy what it can do, truthfully. Mm -hmm. And the net, the net that they've seen in their pockets from that type of viewership is nuts. Of like, course. actually <laughs> insane. Um, and I just, I want to be, I, I want to be able to help them, truthfully. I don't know if that answered the question. I think I got off topic. No, you definitely <laughs> did. Now, can you speak to, a little bit more to the team that you built? I know yeah. you said you had a partner. Yeah. Just speak on how you built that team and what was it like building that team? Finding people who resonate with you, I think, is the key to success. Like, I've I partnered with a lot of people. I felt a lot of people out. You really have to know somebody to partner up with them, mm -hmm. like, on a really deep level. Don't just hop into something. Um, I've known him for three years. So we started in real estate together. 
we were at different brokerages and I finally got him to come over. So it took me two and a half years to get him oh, over. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I think he just sees the the vision and moved to Milwaukee, literally that Instagram. It's kind of crazy. And, you know, I see the vision and what he wants. He's like more commercial based. Um, I'm a lot first time home buyer and, and listing heavy. So we just have different dynamics and we bring a really good like 50 50 to each other. If that makes sense. Of course. Of yeah. course. As we get ready to close out this phenomenal episode of Line for Line podcast, being an entrepreneur, that's not a t- traditional way to go about life or to make that your career. Mm-hmm. Can you just speak on a little bit of the highs and lows of the thought process of, oh, should I be an entrepreneur or should I go work a nine to five? Can you just speak on a little bit what that's like for you? Um, I mean, I work cr- crazy hours, so I wouldn't consider entrepreneurship any less hours than a nine to five. I would consider it double probably. Mm-hmm. Um but at least I'm doing something passionate that I want to do for myself and I'm building something long term that hopefully one day I won't have to work. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. So if you have the grit in you to stay up till 11 o'clock at night and wake up the next morning excited and hungry to work your ass off sometimes for not a paycheck for months, then entrepreneurship may be the right path for you. But it's tough. It's very tough. Um, and I don't try to promote it. I feel like you have to let people come to you mm-hmm. with the with the, like the internal desire. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, because for me, I feel like I would be like extremely scared to work at a job where you only get paid off on commission. Yeah, because then that just puts me on this clock where I'm like, if I don't sell this house or if I don't sell this product, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. it's over for me. You know, how am I gonna eat or anything like that? How is it that you stay strong minded and continue to churn forward? I mean, I know I have it. Like, it's just, like, an internal thing. Like, you know, like, not to be cocky, but, like, you have it and you know that you'll overcome some obstacles and you'll have a lot of lows. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you're doing it. It's going to come eventually. Just keep going at it. And it's been with so many instances. Like I said, I've been in a lot of different fields, a lot of different um, career, not careers necessarily, but jobs and different endeavors that have brought me a lot of lows and highs. And I've just, like, felt it out cycle by cycle. Um, in the beginning of my real estate career, I did serving on the side. Like, I think you still need a side hustle to, in order to like build your entrepreneurship, um, empire per se Mm -hmm. in the beginning. A lot of people do. And I see, oh my gosh, you see so many like single moms out there, realtors that I just don't know how they do it. Like I'm a young 22 year old girl with a puppy. Like that's all I got in my life going (laughs) on. But they have like, you know, children like to mouse to feed, you know, diapers to buy, you know, a mortgage to pay. Like they have a lot more responsibility. And when I see them do it, I just, it blows my mind. And they have it on a whole nother level that is crazy. And I um, bow down to them because I feel like I'm over here just living life, you oh know, my gosh. buying coffees. Of course, of course. <laughs> so. As we get ready to close this episode, is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to? And then if there are after the shout outs, just leave them with that lasting piece of information to remember Abigail Jacqua. I love that. Um, Sarah, my mentor, I love you so much. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Um, and honestly, I think just, you know, chase your dreams, whatever it is. Whether that's sales, whether that's people, passion, whatever. I think just chase your dreams and find somebody who can support you and love you in, in those dreams. So I'm Abigail. Um, thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been another episode of Life for Life Podcast. I'm your host, Most Devon Booker. And that was Mrs. Abigail. Thank you guys for tuning in. You calling, are you listening? Tune in every week. Life for Life. Oh, yeah, I'm going Life for Life.